also described in the book the difference between a synthetic vitamin molecule, you know, looked at under a microscope, it, that it may <laughs> look like a natural one, but it's not, and you used the acronym HOPE. Would you explain that? Well, what's really interesting, you know, this book has only been out a short time, but my best uh, measurement on how effective pictures are is with the youngest children. So as of two days ago, I've shown it now to 15 children all below nine years old. Uh, the majority of them were five, six, seven. I had a four-year-old stuck in there too. On page 41 in Supplements Exposed, on misconcept number one, I've shown 15 children, all below nine, only one nine, most five and six, this picture, and I said, which one would you like to eat? And guess what? Fifteen children pointed to the whole food supplement. And 15 cases, I said to them, uh, why don't you like that other one? And out of them, listen to me closely, eight of them said, it looks ooky or dead. The word was ooky or dead. So even if you're not good readers, Buy my book, look at page 41, and tell me if you have enough common sense after that with a microscope uh, looking at a supplement to know which one you should be eating and not. The living one looks like sun, glowing and energy coming out of it. The dead one looks like the sun was killed. And so it's pretty simple. Also, later in the book, we did another, uh, not myself, but a laboratory out in California did it for us, they actually show the energetic effect of supplement in the body. That's on page 133. And in this specific sample, we looked at a chemical variety, absorbic acid of vitamin C, and amyla C. Amyla is a berry from the east that is very, very, very high, much more than rosehip in vitamin C. And this, of course, is a living whole food variety. Well, if you look at the chemical supplement, it looks like a digital camera that went wrong, and if you look at the Amala C, it looks like firecrackers going off on the 4th of July or New Year's Eve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if you only look at page, the two pages I talked about, 41 and 133, even if you don't read very well, you're going to understand what I'm talking about here. <laughs> so, But that acronym was really helpful, too, if you could talk about that, the hope. Yeah, I mean... Hope you have to understand uh, that what we've learned here at Hippocrates over the 54 years that we've been in existence is that there are hormones and oxygen and phytochemicals and enzymes that are in this raw living food. And that's why we've had thousands, tens of thousands of people uh, eliminate stage 4 cancers, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, right down the list of things. And also, all of us who live this way and also exercise and keep a pro positive attitude, it's not all food, we, we don't age the way the rest of the population does. And these are facts I'm telling you. These are not my opinion. The, the bottom line is with this, is if you're getting the whole food, this hope, the hormones in, in the whole food, is part of a whole food supplement. And the hormones are the messengers, the chemistries, that allow one cell to communicate with another cell. And we're not quite sure of the mechanism or pathway of this, but we're positive this is true. That when you're taking, for instance, a whole food variety of vitamin E compared to the turpentine variety, that's over 80% on the market. I'll repeat that so you catch it. Uh, compared to the turpentine that we call vitamin E, that's what they make most of that out of, 80% of it on the market, we would actually see that that whole food form of vitamin E would come into the body and those hormones that are also contained within that whole food variety and whole foods themselves would allow that vitamin E to go down the pathway of communication and enter into the human cell. Now we have the next letter of hope, oxygen. We knew in 1917, listen closely people, you can read this in my book Life Force. In 1917 we we awarded the Nobel Prize to a German scientist who showed us you can't digest nutrients without oxygen being present. Now, what did I just say to you? And what happens when you cook a food or process a whole food supplement? You don't have any oxygen available. 1917, we give the guy a Nobel Prize and say, hey, you're right. You're the smartest doctor in the world on nutrients, and you're right. 
Then we sent them out to pasture and forgot about it because it's a whole lot cheaper to make chemical supplements. And there's a heck of a lot more profit, up to thousands of percent more profit in a chemical supplement. So now what happens when you take a whole food, you get the oxygen or a whole food supplement, and you then fulfill what we knew in 1917. You can absorb the nutrients in there. Phytochemicals. What could be more profound than this? It's only 1948 we discovered the very first phytochemical. 1992 we kicked it off and started real research on it. And I'm now finishing a book that's up to 700, 800 pages that I'm probably going to have to break into three volumes on all the current research on just the subjects I'm picking. Because if I wrote this book on every damn subject on whole, on whole foods and plant-based foods that heal disease, this book would probably be 18,000 pages long. So the ones I'm selecting, and I have to be very selective, and I'm reading like a lunatic to do this, but by the way, this is going to be 800 pages, probably in three volumes, on how we know for sure in the scientific world how plant-based nutrients called phytochemicals prevent and eliminate disease. So this is also what you get in a whole food supplement. Then you get enzymes in there. And any of the raw foodie uh, groupies out there listening know about enzymes because most of the raw food uh, enthusiasts who are not scientists at least talk about the enzymes. And enzymes are one of four hormones, oxygen, phytochemicals, and enzymes. One of four of this four-leg table that, in fact, those enzymes are what help the electromagnetic frequency become part of the nutrient. So it becomes a, a living nutrient, a whole ionic nutrient. Now, what the word ionic means is electrically charged nutrient. And so when you have a whole food supplement, the electrically charged nutrient deeply goes into the pathway of the cell and engages an electrical increase in frequency also, in addition to the free radical killers called antioxidants that you get from whole food vitamins, whole food nutrients, protect the cell electromagnetically from the free radical, which is electric killers of healthy cell. So besides the picture, like you said, which says so much by itself, the, the dead cells, the synthetic ones, don't have any of this. They don't have the hormones. They, they the rob your body of that. They rob the body of nutrients. They give you disease. Uh, one section of the upcoming book, which hopefully will be out later this year, literally addresses it with the research on things like acrylamides, where you can take organic grains and cook them. They become cancer-causing. Once you cook these things, potatoes, french fries, cancer-causing. This is science. This is hardcore science. That, by the way, you hear little tweeting birds early in the morning speak about because the onslaught of research is governed and controlled by the companies that are trying to sell you things. They don't want you to know the truth like Supplement Exposed explains to people. Mm-hmm.